Okay, welcome to the last session of this year's Cute World Summit. And um, I head over to my colleague, Ionot, um, um, senior consultant here at the Cute company here in Berlin. So uh, enjoy. Thanks. So, yeah. So today I'll, I'll present you, okay, the title is a bit long. But I'll present you the, the video walls you see here in front. So you, you've seen the two video walls. I, I hope everyone had the chance with, uh, to play with them. So I will explain the software which runs behind those two video walls. And also the history of the software itself. So yeah, I worked in this industry for uh, ten, 10 years. Actually, exactly 10 years. I'll, I'll show a slide on that. And I also explain why Qt. So first of all, so I did different, different version of the software, so it evolved. And also, at some points, Qt, I started using Qt inside the software, and I explain why this happened. So first, I'll show you a small video, which we filmed Monday when we installed the, the walls. So here, you, can, it's, it's a, you have a, a Kinect camera under, under the, the wall, and when someone passes by, in this case, for example, there are logos who appear on, on the wall. Uh, okay, and then you have the snow. So you can play, this is, is done with uh, bullet physics. It's the Google uh, physics engine. And uh, yeah, it's interact, it's, you can interact with the person itself. And again, it's similar to the one before, but here you have a small water effect. So when the logos are moving, you can see the waves in the, uh, the logos are making waves. And yeah, you can play around. Yeah. yeah it's the last day, so if you didn't play with it, uh, next year. <laughs> okay, so first question is what's used for besides standing here in front of the room? So in cinema, uh, you have different markets, especially uh, branding. Uh, Awareness, for example, in cinema lobby, so they did a project with Disney and show uh, the, the mo new movie content. Entertainment, co corporate lobbies, retail, museums, and airport, rail station, and so on. So you have different, different markets where this kind of technology could be interesting. So you have this printing, printing, which is like old technology, and some people can just pass by and don't care. And if you have something moving and interacting and, and you play, uh, play with, then you can attract people and promote the product. So this is the main idea. So talking about the installation here, this is another installation done, which I, I've done uh, in Barcelona. So in the, I'm talking about the case in Barcelona. So here you had the Kinect under the screen, same as here. You can see yourself like augmented reality. Uh, because it was a big screen like this, I had to do some a touch screen. So if you do a touch screen on a, if you put like a foil or a capacity foil, it would be very expensive, like 10 to 15,000 euros. So I put a, a, a laser, a LIDAR, a laser array on top, the same you see on the cars. And this is how you can detect the touch points. In this case, you had only four buttons. So the idea when you use this kind of technology, the buttons should be relatively big. And then in this case, it worked. So this is how it's the, te the technology. Then you, so it's also a client-server architecture. When you have the FX mill, it's how I call the, the, the server, which runs on the walls. And with a client, with a uh, Adler, I can connect to the, to the server and configure, change, monitor, and so on. So here, for, I will not show it because the, the connection is a bit slow, but I can connect to, the, to both walls here and change the content, stop, start, change the parameters, and so on. So everything can be done from here. And uh, I'll show you in the presentation a bit that it's even more complex than this, is that on the FX mill, the server, there's absolutely no UI. So without Adler, it's nothing you can do. And this was a design choice to, in order, so if you say on the server, it's nothing I can do, implicitly you say with the Adler, I can do everything. So remote, you can do everything. So I'll say to, to the, I was saying, if I'm in front of the screen, or if I'm home in my, I, from the control perspective, there's no difference. And also, because it's digital signage, you have a Kinect, you have LiDAR, 
you want statistics. So we also was generating statistics, how many people are in front of the screen, how long the people stayed in front of the screen, and so on. So these are the return of investment that the, the companies need based on this technology. So you invest money. If you put a poster, you have no idea what's happening. But if you have this kind of technology with a camera, you can count the number of people. You can count how long they stay in front of the screen. And this kind of information is very important for the, for the brands. So how it works, so uh, you have this FX mill, which is the, the computers who are here. They are, playing, they are playing the interactive effects. So here, I think there are five effects. Four. Five, actually. And actually, they are, in total, you can have like 30, 40. And then you can mix and match, so it's like no limit. Uh, and, and then you have the other client here on the, the, the laptop, which connects on the FX mill, and you can create and so on. So the other client is a, a thin client. What means a thin client means there's no information saved on the, on the laptop. So all the information is saved on the, on the, on the, on the server. So if I'm playing with, with Adler and I crush it and I close it, I connect again to the server and nothing is lost. Obviously, if the server crashes, you lose the information, but the, the Adler itself it's no, doesn't save anything. So I can connect to any PC and all the information comes from the server itself. So in this case, it's very useful because there are two different, there are two video walls. So I cannot save some information from each one and then use it. So this, all the information is saved on the server itself. So how it works? You have the sensors. So in this case, you have the Kinect. Uh, you have the content. So the, the cute brand manager helped me with the content, and he created all the content you've seen here. You have the remote management. So with my laptop, I can connect on the. On the, on the walls, you have the display. In this case, it's a three by three. And you can also generate other output like statistics, metrics, snapshots. So when you have an installation who runs remote, like I was in Berlin, I had an installation in Munich. I was, I was generating snapshots every 10 minutes, and I could see if something is, goes wrong or not. And inside the uh, universal statistics, and you can also have QR, QR codes, NFC, if you want to interact even more with, with the installation. So the type of sensors, there are a lot. Uh, so I just want to show a difference between why I'm, I'm putting IDS cameras and webcams. Why is the difference? Because, because all the webcams are at 30 frames per second. It's good for video chatting, it's not good for interactivity. So for interactivity, I'm using these IDS cameras, which are professional cameras, can go 60, 120, and so, and so on. So this is one of the, the difference. And then you have all the touch. The normal touch screen capacity for multi-touch, laser, the one that you've, see, you've seen in the previous slide, and I was playing with the leap motion, Mio, arm barn, and so on. It's just for fun. So what kind of display? All kind of displays. So you have the video walls, you have the LED screens, you have these tiles, which are some kind of creating any, any shape dis display. And if you've seen the transparent screens, which are really cool for, you have a product inside, it's a, uh, it's a touch screen and you can use to it. So, because the software is also a touch screen, it could be touch screen and interactive in the same boss or projection. Uh, if you know, if you've been to the party last night to the event, the big projection app was also done with the same software. Uh, the statistics, not much to say. So this was, you can see when people are coming that at certain hours, there is more people. They are not super precise. It's not like you cannot say there were like 25 people there. But it's more like you say, you can have an overview of what's happening. You say, for example, on, in this, uh, this month, monthly information, you can see on weekends, something happens, which makes sense. If you go to cinema, you go in the weekends. So in the, in the weekends, there are more people going than during the week. And this is what this says and how long the people are staying in front of the screen you have here, some information. So yeah, the, con the concept is that because it's also this client-server architecture, you can connect with, the, with the, the, the client, with Adler, but you can also create tests. So the, the idea is that I, I, pref I like integration tests. All these unit tests, they are, they are nice to, to find small bugs, but if you want to test your application in a use case scenario, the way it will be on the wall, and you want to make sure that it works, then you, I create integration tests. And in this case, you have a, I'm testing the application which is deployed, before, obviously before deploying it, 
I connect with another client with the FX tests, and I generate different snapshots, and I, and I compare the snapshots. And then I know that every time I modify the code, uh, I can sleep at night. And I also know that the code I'm testing is the one who goes, uh, is deployed, the one who's deployed. Here, it's a, it's a view of the Adler. So here you can see uh, the, the, the view of the, the Kinect camera in 3D. So you have a, a person there waving. And you have all these little points. So what's a, what's a 3D camera? It's, it sends, uh, it's called time of flight. It's, it sends like a, a particle, or a, and it calculates the time it takes for this to come back, the light. And when you know the, the time it takes, then you can create a depth, a distance for each pixel. And this is the, so the camera, when I, this is the view of the, the distance of the pixels from the sensor. You can see it here. And this is how you, you calibrate. I say, in this region, someone is there. If it's outside the region, it's not. So this is the calibration for the, the wall outside. The test, OK, they are simple tests. But here I can, I can show you that you have like the reference image. You have the image that FXMIL gener generated. And I can see that something is wrong. OK, in this case, it's obvious. But uh, it works even with smaller uh, different, a lot of different tests can fail for different reasons. The idea is that if you always, also, uh, always test on the same computer, the images generated are always the same. If you move with a different graphics board, then you have to recreate your reference images. But as long as you stay on the same computer, everything is good. And yeah, FX million action. So this was a, a trade show, which is, you see, it's, it's very similar to what's here with a different content, actually. This was a Hubble telescope image in the background. You have the person, same as here in front, with different logos. And, she, and this, in this case, the person was like in a watery environment. I know, watery in space, but OK, it was not my concept. Uh, <clears throat> OK, so this was a, the overview of what's the software. Now, I, it was not done in one day or in five days like Rome. So it took more time than that. So if you look from the, from the software perspective, what you see on the screen, it was not. You don't see such a huge difference between the different versions. So a uh, uh, water simulation five years ago is the same water today. I mean, the water simulation that didn't change. But the, the infrastructure of the software, how the software is itself, something you, you do in your, in your basement, and something that you sell to, to multiple clients to deploy on different platforms, that's something completely different, even if the result is the same. The, what you view on the, uh, see on the screen is the same. So the first, I start in 2007. So there was a, a project in Laval, in France. It was a 24-hour coding marathon. So we got a, a team, and we need to create an interactive software with the team. And the team was to be in a dream. And that's it. You have 24 hours to do something with a dream. So we said, I, I had a dream to fly. And we created a, a bird simulation. So you put a camera here. Back then, there was no Kinect. Was a, this was a normal camera. You had the, my colleague over there who was flying, moving his arm. And you can see the little bird over there flying. And also, the, the, the background was moving. And it's like in a dream. So you, you were flying in a dream. So this was the concept. It was very difficult, because if you go like this for, ten, for five minutes, you get tired. So. It also, it also could be good for workouts. This is why he was doing it. And yeah, this is me here. So at, of course, we, we won the first prize for this competition. And we, the, our school was going to this competition for 10 years. And we always celebrate our first prize uh, at Mont Saint-Michel. I mean, our school, we won this competition nine or eight, time, eight times out of 10. So it was a tradition at some point. So yeah. I was looking a bit different. So then we decided, the three on the left, to create a company ourselves to, to sell this, to commercialize this software. So we went from three guys who did this in 24 hours to let's create a commercial software. So the question is, 
Can you, is it a difference between the both? So we said, of course it's a difference, right? So the first thing we wanted to do is to create a way to avoid copy-paste code, which is like, if you want, if you have like three or four effects and you want to deploy, the, to, to, to prototype, to create effects fast, you copying, copy-paste code was like, we were against that because you know, it's hard to maintain, you, you, you change one thing, it breaks, you, you have to fix it over, everywhere, so this was the first priority for us. And again, I, I showed in this first version, there's no, no, no Qt yet. So what's the solution, how we decided to, what, what solution we came with is to create something we call node-based programming. This means you have the camera, in this case it was a, a black and white camera, you have to transform to, RG, to color, you do a threshold, you put on the screen. If I want to add a blur, I just put another element in between and I add a blur. And this is how you create, we create these interactive effects. We have, now I have like 540 or 560 of these boxes and you put them together and you, you connect like this and this is how you create effects. So if, for example, I want to, put, so here you have this, this, the last effect with these elements who move around and I want to put an, a water, I just put a water effect, I say the balls are creating the water and I put it on screen. So I have a water effect, I had a particle effect, I combine them without any code whatsoever. It's just drag and drop and connect the dots. Talking about water, this was the, the first water we did I forgot the year, 2008, I think, on a big screen. But the first version was not easy to configure. We avoid the, the copy-paste, but we didn't avoid the creating the effects by hand. <laughs> so we said this is not an option. Let's go to the next version, version 2, and fix this creating and configuring effects problem. And we needed a UI, so cute. To the rescue, we create, we use uh, Qt4 back then, and uh, even so, even if it's a Windows only, it was a Windows only software, so we didn't need multi-platform in the beginning because we were using Direct X10, uh, 9, and we decided still decided to go with Qt. Why? Okay, we had experience. I know this is not a reason, but when you are three guys and you have to deliver in the four months. You don't have time to learn everything. You need to do something very fast. It's because our first project after we found the company was in, in the first uh, four months with Cirque du Soleil. And we, we, had, we didn't sleep. I think it was the longest period I, never, I didn't sleep. It was like four days in a row. Uh, so also we could easily integrate DirectX with QWidgets. There was, I think the Q graphics view was just get being released, was 4.2, I think, if I remember correctly. So this was allowing us to create the, the small pipeline I showed you before. And also the Qt WebKit. So the Qt WebKit is something that made, uh, played a major decision in our, uh, ma major, major um, role in our decision, as we need to also to have like Flash or web-based uh, interaction back then. And here also you can see there's a Twitter wall done with the web engine. So even if you have interactive, sometimes you want to have a Twitter wall, you have to have some other kind of web information and that's why you need in this kind of application uh, some kind of web kit, web engine or web uh, browser. And this is the result. So here you can see we have the elements on the left. Here we can drag and drop, put all the elements together create them, double click on them, configure, and you see on the screen. I, I want to show this version, it was not client server. So what I, sh I, I showed you in the beginning, it was not, it's not yet there. We are just, this is the same application with the, the UI is built in the application. And yeah, you have this nice effects on the, here and here you have the result, you have these balls. Back then, we didn't have, I didn't use uh, bullet physics or box 2D. We had uh, one of our guys was a ph physics guru, so he was doing this by himself. He also did the simulation of the bird by himself. So, um, yeah, you can see here, like, it, uh, this is only one projector projecting on four different 
parts of the, of the door. This was like a, this, this was like a presentation. It was not like something permanent. It was like a fair, a startup fair. So we want to present and we want to pro we project it on the, on the, on the door. So you have one projector and you have all these balls who move around. So yeah, this was in Canada. Now, uh, I, I moved to Berlin. So this was my first company. That, then I founded my second company in Berlin. When you, when you move companies, you cannot just take your, your source code and copy it to the second one. That's, that's a no-go. So you, you, if you want to do it, you have to start from completely from scratch. And we did it. So actually, again, three developers. We, with my, some of my friends from Canada, we, we found a second company. And we, um, yeah, we created a new software. But in this new version of the software, we said, let's create a client-server architecture, the one I showed in the beginning. And we said, OK, a server has no UI. So let's say no Qt. We, and then we say a UI, let's go with Qt, because you know for the same reasons. And also because the UI in this time, uh, we, we, we wanted maybe to make it multi-platform, because it could be on the Mac, could be, so it's, there's no, no, uh, no big like image processing or so, something like this. Everything goes on the server. So this is why we said for the, for the server, the FX mill, there's no, no Qt, but for the other, we went with Qt. So yeah, so this is the same concept. You have the other connects to the internet to the FX mill. You play with the screen. Uh, this is, okay, this is, looks like a pie, but this is a simulation of a laser array. So a laser array, the one I showed you at the beginning, it goes from zero to 270 degrees. And if you want to, it looks like this. And if something goes in between, it just cuts the rays. So you have a small rectangle over there. And you say, if some of the rays are going inside this rectangle, means that it's a touch. I touch this rectangle. So this is, this is the, the, the other. And you have on the, on the left a lot of information, parameters, and so on. So this is to configure the effects. But we, we, didn't, we don't create them yet. We, Back to the square one. We did a nice UI to create the effects, to, to configure the effects, but we, had, we didn't do yet the UI to create the effects. So, Qt Graphics View, why not? Oh, sorry, I'm speaking French now. No, uh, why not? Um, we in, 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 incorporated Qt Graphics View in, in the other. But we also decided, so now, from now on, I'm alone. So from my two other people left the company, and I'm alone. So I said, the server, they did the server. I said, let's do it. I want to do the server again, myself, with all their help, with Qt. And one of the reasons I wanted to, to do the server again from scratch is because of the scripting. So scripting is extremely important, especially for testing. So when I showed you testing in the beginning, the scripting of the, the server is very important. So that's why I, I decided to use QScript to do that. And yeah, statistics and so on. So yeah, I know this is a very technical slide, but I put it here to, to understand why I, 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 cho I chose Qt in a, non, a purely non-UI application. So the main reason is scripting web support and web support. And also unit tests. So you, the, the Qt test, I mean, I know Qt test, it's a light, lightweight library. But still, it save, saves you time. If you want to do simple unit tests, why not using a uh, test? And I, I, OK, this is me, which I like these signals. And I think it's more than me, but I like this signal slot mechanism of Qt. So I, I didn't want to, I wanted to use it because it's, it makes my life easier. And don't forget, I was alone. So everything that makes your life easy, you take. But all, and also, I had this, all this multimedia of Qt. I, I, it was not my primary target, because I was doing with other libraries, but I was using the Qt multimedia for backup. So s some files, specific files, which cannot be, written, cannot be read by FMPEG or VLC, you can use them with Qt and so on. So I had like four different video players. And depends on what files the customer were giving me, I was using the one I wanted for the specific cases. And the only thing which I was not using Qt back then is the OpenGL. So the, because Qt was changing the, the OpenGL uh, API from 
QGL something to QOpenGL. So this was in, in a process. And I said, you know, when something in the process, it could change. Not sure. You didn't have geometry shaders. They didn't have tessellation shaders back then. I said, you know what? Let's do it myself. Uh, the result, yeah, I, I showed this the same slide in the beginning. So the result is that you have the Adler with client, which is done with Qt, and also, OK, I forgot an image, the, the server with Qt. The next version, FXML3, it's similar to the FXML2. The only difference, I switched from Qt4 Qt to Qt5. So when I started to FXML3, uh, I think it was Qt5.2, uh, 5.3, I don't remember exactly. And it was stable, but it was stable so I said, let's switch. And also because of the Kinect, because the Kinect 2 requires C++ 11, so I had to change the compiler from, 2000, uh, from Visual Studio 2010 to 2013. And when you do all these changes, I also changed Qt. And I said, OK, it's the next version, because you have different, uh, different functionalities. But it's still the same code base. So you could run, I compiled it until the end of this version, I compiled uh, the version with Qt4 and Qt5 uh, in the same time. You have a few defines, but you, you could have two versions, Qt4 and Qt5 in parallel. After I did this for a few years, I said there was no useful to, useless to do the Qt4 version because I never use it, but I just wanted, you know, I did it once, so I want to keep it and to make it, to keep both versions, FXMIL2 and FXMIL3 in the same time. <laughs> so this is the result. You have, again, the same pipeline. You drag and drop elements. You put them together. You have here the preview in, uh, in Adler. And on the screen is this image. So here you can see the preview of the image also on the screen. The, the next version is from Q3, uh, FXMIL3 to FXMIL4. So why change again? <laughs> It's because for one of the reasons, okay, I'll show you the other reason, but the, one of the reasons for, to change was for cleanness. You, I started with a Windows 7, Windows, uh, Windows 8, then Windows 10, and you, you start with the first multi-touch was a multi-touch foil, which was because back then in Windows 7, there was not multi-touch support. So I had all these legacy features, which now they you don't need them anymore. And uh, I had like, uh, I think, 47 different libraries inside with like hundreds and hundreds of modules. And it was like, and I wanted to change to make it better. And also the big change was I wanted to introduce Qt Quick. So I had to change my, my, my scripting engine from QScript to QML engine. It's possible, you can do that. You can, but if I, I would have done that, I had to modify all the software and I say to, to as if you want to modify the software, might as well create a new one. <laughs> this is my philosophy. When you, you work too much in patching, start fresh. This doesn't mean I was not, I'm not copying all the time stuff from the old one to the new one, but I'm copying only what you need. So if I need a water effect, I'm copying a water effect. If I need this effect, I'm copying it, but you, in this way you always are, you stay clean. Unless you have to work like before a project a lot, and then you start to be less clean, but if you have time, you, you keep your, your code clean. Uh, also, I, I changed the uh, OpenGL functions. Now I'm fully using the Q OpenGL functions and Q OpenGL shaders and so on, and which also saved me a lot of, of, of uh, ma maintenance work because you, I had these old APIs and I have to maintain it myself, and it's a lot of work. And also, like, uh, and also the Q, Qt Web Engine support. So the, the, the version you, you see here, it's, it's of course FXMIL4, because you have this web, uh, web engine support, you have the Qt Quick, and you have all the effects which were in, in the previous versions. This is how it looks now, the client. Again, this is Q, Q, uh, web, uh, Q Graphics view. And here on the right, you have the preview of the wall, which, which is outside. And this is how it looks. So again, you, you, you put them together, you can click, you can modify, and so on. And the result, you can see here someone playing and someone else playing. And I have more pictures, but I think you, you've seen. So yeah, so this, this was the evolution of, of the software from the beginning, three, three gigs in the basement, to a software that can uh, run on multiple 
multiple loc location on multiple video walls being controlled over the network. And uh, yeah, so the beginning, some gigs in the basement, then you have this node-based programming. This was the first step, uh, the first step. Then we decided to use Qt4 widgets for the UI. Then was the new version, which is a server team client architecture. So the UI is uncoupled from the application. So you have the, the server and the UI separate. Uh, then you say the server, I want to be script a scriptable server. So QScript was, into, it was put on the server. Then it was a change from Qt4 to Qt5. And finally, a change from the QScript to QQML engine and QtQuick. And that's it. Unless you have questions. Yeah. So yeah, the, the widgets, so you, on, the, on the client is still widgets. Okay, the client is fully widgets. The, the client is fully, this is fully widgets. Okay. So Qt Quick, it's on the server. For, so in this case, is a web engine. So, so you have the, so what I do in this case, you have the web engine, which is one a, a Q, a Qt Quick element. And then I have this Q open, G, uh, how it's called, Q frame buff, Q Quick frame buffer. With the Q Quick frame buffer, you create, you have a, a, a frame buffer object. And in this frame buffer object, I'm giving it, as you can see here, I see, I'm giving it, you have the web engine, I have a cube buffer object, I give it as a texture, and I do all my rendering in one texture. So, and then you can combine all the OpenGL I've done before, purely OpenGL with Qt Quick, only by exposing this texture, and then you render in this texture, and then it's a, it's a trick because of the fading, you see you have a, at the end, at the end here, oops. Uh, where is it? Here at the end, it's, I put in my, in my pipeline, I put a simple white color, but the web engine comes on top. <laughs> it's a, a small hack to have the web engine on top. But, and then the, the fade between the effects, you, it's seamless. You don't see that one is web engine and the, re, the rest are four different uh, graphical uh, graphics in OpenGL. Any other question? No? Then I would like to thank Yonat for this wonderful presentation. I made this little joke at the beginning, but now I'm completely <laughs> impressed and owe you a beer. Yay.